Flattened homes, downed power lines, uprooted vegetation, and the stench of animal carcasses. The grim scene Hurricane Irma left behind on Ragged Island. The promise at the time was to rebuild the uninhabitable family island community into the country's first green island. But that process has yet to begin, as area MPI Chester Cooper recently pointed out. Hitting back, Works Minister Desmond Bannister said such comments are very unfortunate. That aside, the minister yesterday told reporters that the government's partnered with a number of private sector entities to ensure the work's done properly. We have to ensure that we build according to code now, um, but we're also ensuring that there's a amazing input and assistance to those people. And so you're going to see some of the biggest companies in the world get involved in the uh, Rygat Island project. And when you see Rygat Island again, uh, in a short while, it is going to be an example that we can follow for the rest of the world, what we're doing down there. Now, in terms of dollars and cents, Minister Bannister says restoring hurricane-torn Ragged Island will take tens of millions of dollars. He said while no timeline can be given because of human factors, a number of large companies will be working with them to ensure that what's produced is a quality city. Um, the carbon war room is involved. Uh, Tesla's involved. There are a number of things that are involved that require international input. And uh, I can tell you that the people who are, who are leading this are very, very concerned about Ragged Island. But they're also concerned that if Ragged Island is hit again by another hurricane, you're not going to see that kind of devastation. Local charity Head Knowles Foundation has organized a two-hour telethon on this evening to assist with restoration efforts on both Ragged Island and Salina Point, Acklands. This the second time Head Knowles has staged such an event. In 2015, it assisted in relief efforts in the wake of Hurricane Joaquin. Tonight's telethon kicks off at 8 p.m. And tis the season to be jolly, but for some, that's easier said than done. Deaths, painful memories, and little to no cold hard cash could all trigger off what experts loosely call the Christmas blues. And the symptoms are real. Headaches, insomnia, fatigue, restlessness, boredom, and sadness. But there is a way to beat them and get into the swing of the holidays. And noted psychiatrist Dr. David Allen has a few suggestions. For instance, try to embrace the fact that sadness will come, so try to focus on the positive. It's also wise to see Christmas through the eyes of a child. And most importantly, consider this. Recognize God. Christmas means that somehow God didn't forget us. Because if there was no Christmas with all the war and the ups and downs in life, life would be pretty absurd, pretty dark. But because God loved us, he came down as a baby came down as the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we stop and recognize our limitations, our inadequacies, we all have failures, we all have secrets, we all have shames, but we realize that God is saying, I love you in spite of who you are. I love you in spite of what you've done. I love you in spite of where you've been. I love you in spite of what you have. I love you in spite of your failure. To recognize that God really loves us which a lot, with a love that will never, never let us go. Dr. Allen added that a great way to show love during the season is to sit and visit people, especially the homeless, the imprisoned, and the old. It's so important for us who have some freedom, we're not all totally free, that we think of persons behind bars. I know our program has two families in the prison, and so we're with the men and women there, and. I can tell you they feel a lot of things at Christmas time. They miss their children. They look at their life, how it could have been or should have been. And the old people the same way. And so many churches are visiting church. I know my church goes to the old people's home this coming Friday. I think we can do the same thing. Go and visit. Visit somebody in hospital. Call them, somebody you've never called before. Forgive somebody, that's really important. If you do that psychologically, you will find a whole new life. Keep a gratitude diary. Just write down all the things you're grateful for this Christmas. All the gifts you received. Because actually, everything we have in life, we received. 
Dr. Allen says, ultimately, it all comes down to accepting that you just won't beat every hurdle in a month, but be grateful for what you have and hopeful for the future. Stay with us. We have a look at sports and weather when we return.